Hello and welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about uh, Geospatial Creator from Google. We'll also be looking at uh, Adobe Aero, which is a beta software for augmented reality. Um, also, you know me as uh, Best Banners Ever, uh, but I also work at a digital creative agency in central London called Bernadette. So there will be elements of that in this presentation today. Also, if you do know something about Geospatial Creator already, please skip over the initial chapter and move on to the demo and then straight into the Aero demo. Thanks, enjoy. Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Google's Geospatial Creator. Now, what is this technology? Well, it's been around for about a month. It basically, what it is, is that it allows AR creators to create experiences based around a lat along location that's completely unique to that location. The benefit is, is it allows you to build up experiences taking into account the buildings that are there. So you don't need to have pre-scanned the buildings that are already there to work out if your experience can work in that location. You don't necessarily need to plan for occlusion, even though occlusion is something we all talk about. Also, you don't need to necessarily concern yourself with SLAM. So that's obviously the simultaneous you know, mapping of that location to make sure something is in the right location and it's detected against a flat surface. So what we'll do is have a quick look through the article. I'll then show off a little demo we've done, and then I'll also show you how you can build it yourself. So we've got the launch or introductory video from Google, so I'll have a quick play of this. So as you can see here, that person's created an experience in that location, which is completely unique. And that's what makes it great. It's very user-centric, of course. That's what we want. We want the users to feel like it's directed at them. Exclusive offers, you know, it's, it's very, user focused it allows creators to be very specific I, I do love this construction option the fact that you can plan and create and visualize how it will look but keep in mind about that occlusion it's not going to necessarily work everywhere straight away i love the gamification c capabilities this is going to be great obviously take it with a pinch of salt that experience and the wayfinding i love this little one you know have a crazy little monster saying hey your friends are over here and then also you know it's not just about that commercial side of things there's also that more emotional you know um, something to bring to the community through gallery experiences and connecting with that community so there's some really exciting elements here now how do you go about doing it well there are two options at the moment there's unity for those who know unity it's um, a really powerful tool and there are some very specific ways of building into it i will do a video of that on that build at a separate time it's far more complicated i'm an amateur so um, it took me a while to get it right however there is another option which is from adobe so adobe have aero which is their beta entry into the ar or augmented reality um, platform series so you know it's their it's their um Adobe uh, Aero, it's their entry into the platform system. So you can use their beta system, it is beta, so you will need to sign up. There will be a link in the description below, so if you can go and sign up, it takes about two days, you'll get a link. You can download the desktop application, and then you can build your experience to that. Keep in mind it isn't beta, so it's not fully fledged out. We'll just quick, quickly scroll through so you can see here the other things you can do. You see you'll be able to scan and uh, obviously see things in, in great detail, but keeping in mind the fidelity of that detail is very particular. Uh, another example, uh, there was a Space Invaders game obviously created for basically part of the launch. What's really great about this is that it allows to obviously create some gamification for that location, which we all love the idea of, right? That's the point why a lot of us get into creating AR experiences for that gamification um, to bring users together. But also it means that we can build experiences specifically for those locations. So watching as the experience goes through. So this is the element I was really excited about, the fact that you could obviously just map to that location and build out an experience on top. You know, you reinvent the world. Uh, for your experience. So this is this is the power. This is the exciting part of it So I'll quickly now um, go to uh, the quick starter guide. So the quick starter guide here uh, again I will leave a link in the description below um, It's primarily po po powered by AR core um, But if you are building within unity, obviously you can build for AR kit as well So you're not limited completely there. Um, so again, as I said earlier, there is unity and there is arrow now, obviously, there's one other side of technology which we haven't talked about. It's called Cesium. Cesium is a technology that was already 
It's already been around for a number of years, which allows for uh, buildings, uh, uh, locations to be built in 3D to a specific location. Um, so I'll just run through a couple of examples here. Once it loads. So there we've got New York, uh, uh, Manhattan Island in fact, uh, laid out already in 3D. Um, but what you don't have is the actual tiling of those buildings. So that's what's missing. And that is where the Google Map uh, map tile tile map map tiling API uh, will resolve that issue for you so as I say we'll get into it in a bit more detail with uh, unity however um, you can see here that this is what you'll be taking so it'll be this plus AR core combining together to create that uh, AR experience within Aero or unity right let's move on to the quick demo we did uh, built with Aero Hello, welcome back. So we're now going to have a go at doing that error build using the example we've already seen. So I shall move my, myself out of the way and we'll get on with this. Show. Da, 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 da. Right. So as I've said before already, uh, what you'll need to do is make sure you've already signed up to Aero and it'll take a couple of days. You'll then get a link to download the software and, and you can work from there. Right, let's make sure I'm not in the way. Uh, looks like I'm a little bit in the way. Let's get myself probably about there. Just adjust the software a bit. Move myself. Okay, so this is Aero. It's uh, obviously beta, so it's a brand new technology, so it's not fully fledged, but it is Adobe's entry to the world of AR. So what you first of all do is create your new experience either by clicking a new file or create a new file from the bit in the middle. And give it a name, test test four. Then you get a notification about when you're creating an AR experience to make sure you are um, respectful of others about that AR experience in that location that you're also creating it. I also sometimes think maybe they should also have the additional safety message of saying, you know, don't put this on a public highway or you'll be uh, liable and things like that. So anyway, that's what it's saying right, uh, right off the bat. Now we're gonna hit, hit continue. Now it will automatically open up the option to build out a uh, AR experience based on a ladder long. So this is its sort of primary. So we'll just do a quick search for some locations. So Times Square, for example, Manhattan. So a nice easy one to load in. Uh, it might load quick for some of you, might not load uh, necessarily that fast. I mean, obviously the quality is <laughs> the quality, but that's part of the map tiling. It's only going to be based on that quality. Uh, I tend to reset. So whenever I found the location I want, I will make sure I reset it. So it's exactly where I want it because sometimes the lat along will be slightly out in the level of um, the depth and so forth. So you want to be exactly precise where you want to do that experience. Uh, Let's skip away from Times uh, Square. Let's go to Hong Kong, maybe. Um, Hong Kong. Oh, I wonder if you can get Nathan Lane. Uh, Nathan Road, Nathan Hotel. Ah, well, we'll, keep, we'll just keep it at Hong Kong. We'll just zoom in anyway on that. Now, again. Not all locations are fully fledged out, but it does seem that this one is reset. And again, I've got a three button mouse, so I'm able to do this sort of the rotations uh, around without too much of an issue. Uh, if you don't have a three button mouse, don't worry, it's not going to be uh, too critical. Oh, bit of latency there. Reset it to. There. Obviously, that's me doing it on a public highway, so you wouldn't want to do that, but maybe a sidewalk. Pavement uh, reset. Oh, so, so you can reset it for a location like that. Anyway, let's not do that. We'll pick out the location far more interesting in London where I work. So again, there's a little bit of latency, so just well latency a bit delayed. So I'll just reset it to the location we want, which is the location we've already 
What has he created that experience for? There you go. So we'll use this as our battle long and we'll work from there. Now when it does it, uh, when it sets it up, um, just to keep an eye on the properties panel on the right hand side, bottom right hand corner, that it says uh, the anchor type is uh, location. Now obviously if you were doing an experience that was indoors or uh, just outside the building or you just wanted to do some slams so you just wanted to get a three, you wanted to get your AR experience uh, to work on a flat plane then you can uh, change the anchor type from a horizontal surface to a vertical surface and also have an image marker so there are uh, serious potentials. Also take a note that when um, the uh, when it loads into um, sorry when when the experience loads into uh, Aero it only loads in a proportion of that map tile it only loads in what you need uh, comparable uh, when you compare it to Unity Unity doesn't it loads everything in but as you move around it will reload it so it's not always sort of um, it's not too much heavy lifting uh, so anyway there's our lat along you can see it down there I'll zoom in again now uh, we'll quickly talk through the software itself and the way it's set up. So on the left hand side we've got uh, an import button, top left hand corner is the plus icon. Uh, then we've got um, the uh, controls for modifying your objects or moving them around. So you've got to move, you've got to rotate and then you've got to scale. And then also we've got uh, options for orbiting and moving around and zooming in and out. So you can select them there or if you've got a three button mouse you can do that as well. Um, then. Um, it also comes sort of out of the box with items, so um, items you can drop in. So we've got some abstract shapes, you've got some basic animations you can pull in, you've got some interior items. Um, you know, it, it's actually quite cool in the sense that they've given you a lot to sort of get going with. So I think that's quite, quite nice and quite impressive, um, and it really helps your uh, sort of development of what you're building. Oh, let's drop in the astronaut. Everyone loves an astronaut. Probably have to drop it over here double tap it of course then it should attach it to the anchor right there we go and, and I think you can safely say that's pretty good oh it looks like the, the new Mars suit as well cool right so what we'll do now is uh, we'll add in some new objects uh, which I talked about earlier which is the Bernadette logo and that map marker uh, and then we'll do some animations so uh, to add an object it's the plus icon top left hand corner Hit the plus icon, select your location, and I'm going to import the logo. I built this logo as a GLB. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can also build them as FBXs. It does support most of the file types that you're probably going to be working with when it comes to 3D objects. Uh, that object is, oh, there's the map mark. It's a rather big, so we'll just scale it down. Um, I'm going to delete the astronaut because, well, it's not on the demo, so um, yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to remove it. So there we go. So we've now added in our objects. One really important thing is that when you're looking at your objects, make sure you're not stuck inside a building. If you're stuck inside a building, you can't select them. So make sure you're obviously not within a building when you're doing that, then you can select them without issue. Uh, right, so I'll select the Bernadette logo first. And to animate it, bottom left-hand corner, there's a little running man, or running person, I should say, sorry and we want to add a trigger. Uh, now the trigger types come in to start, tap, so obviously on tap, uh, and then you've got proximity or when you leave the proximity of the area. I haven't tried the proximity yet, but I suspect it's probably quite a lot of fun. Let's have a quick look. Proximity says, well, there you go. So under the inspector on the right hand side at the bottom, you've got what you've selected uh, and the type, and then you've got the distance at which it will then obviously start to trigger whatever it was going to do. Um, good thing is obviously you can just switch back so you don't need to delete it and start again so I'll just change it to start and then I'm going to add an action to it which will be a spin uh, I'm going to spin it on the Y uh, I'm not going to reverse it I want it to take about five seconds um, I'll keep it linear because I just want it to be a continuous animation that doesn't ease in and ease out just keep it going around normally and we'll hit it for infinity so there's not a, a limitation it will just continuously rotate there is a play button so you can have a quick play just to see what it'll do. That worked. Let's apply the same principle to the uh, anchor marker or the map marker. Again, you can then add a trigger, always making sure you've got it selected either in the scene hierarchy or you've selected it on the stage, the, the development area. Uh, add a trigger uh, on start and the action shall be bounce because I like a good bounce. Who 
doesn't. Uh, two seconds is fine. Let's make it offset by 50 centimeters. Quick play. All right, and let's keep it easing out just for fun. Great, and we'll do infinity so it carries on playing that forever and ever. And that's it. We've now created our first experience to work at that Latimon location using the anchor marker. So, next is saying, what do I do from here? Well, there's two things you can do, which I would suggest you do. One is export it. So do a file export. Um, this will basically save it, save it as a project. So export it to your desktop or wherever you need to store it. And then that way you can come back to it and you can then import it again. You can reopen it and start again. And you, then you can keep adding to it. There isn't such a sort of save mechanic at the moment. Um, the, obviously, the other option is hit share. Now share is obviously where you want to people, where you can actually test it, but then also you could share the link. So let's say you are developing an augmented reality experience, but you're nowhere near. Hence me, I don't live in London any longer. So for me to do my testing now, what I would do is I'll create a link. And then um, I would obviously send this URL, copy that URL and send it to a colleague who's in that location who can do the testing for me. And that's the same principle for anyone else. So if you are creating an augmented reality experience, let's say for Times Square, you don't need to be in the same time zone to do it. And you can just send it to your client when you need to. Now, at the moment, it's still in beta, all this technology. So I wouldn't necessarily go and say, say sign yourself up for a proper job with it. Uh, but certainly it shows off the capability and the technologies. Um, you can also scan the QR code if you are local to the location as well. You can just send the QR code as well to your colleagues. Um, and once you do that, it will open up an Aero uh, temporary file, which will load the experience. It'll want to make sure you're in the right location. And then looking at the example we've already created, you can see that it wants to map to check that you're in the location and then the experience will start. Obviously right now I'm not in that location, but as you've already seen, I've created that experience. So anyway, I would uh, highly recommend that everyone has a go at this technology. It's it's definitely, you know, with Geospatial Creator, this is definitely going to push that, that location-based augmented reality experiences we've been wanting to create, but have felt there's a, an element of restriction by the other platforms that we probably have used. This uh, definitely does open up to the wider and the ability to interact better with those experiences around that location. Keeping in mind with Aero, I don't necessarily know if they're occlusion, for those who do understand occlusion, I don't necessarily know if it's working that well just yet. So it's something to keep in mind. And how interactive it can be, obviously we're limited essentially by the triggers, but there will be some functionality that will come over time. So I would, as I say, get into this technology, start using it and start pushing it and then you'll learn from it. Well, that's it for now. Um, there will be another video which I'll do on the Unity setup. That is a far lengthier process. So if you are looking forward to that, please do let me know and I will make that a priority. Thanks for watching guys. Please don't forget to smash that like button and also don't forget to subscribe.